Peaky Blinders Season 2 Review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Peaky Blinders Season 2. Now I just did a review on Peaky Blinders Season 1. I'll probably do a review of all of these seasons and I think there's gonna be a new one coming out. So I may do a ranking of all the seasons after number five or I might wait for number six. We will see, but you'll be definitely getting my opinion on all of these. So this show actually could have been in my top 10 shows of all time. And after watching it, this show might even be in my top five shows of all time. I am going to be giving away some spoilers in this review. And I do recommend highly that you just go ahead and watch the season, watch season one, watch season two. If you're not into it, you just give up. Okay, come back to this review. But this is really worth watching. I just want to be able to say everything in the video. So there will be some spoilers so this takes place i think it's two years after the first season season two is kind of like giving season one a correct ending i think when they were shooting season one they really didn't know where they wanted to go with it and at the same time you really wanted to see tommy with grace and you just absolutely could not do that in the first season you just didn't have enough episodes so um, you definitely needed it finished here so this one is kind of like a continuation of season one and they really just amp up every single thing that we like about season one without taking anything away and this is where the Peaky Blinders really really shines in my opinion. So anyways guys without further ado let's jump into the pros of this season and I pretty much only have pros I can't believe it but every single thing you liked about the first season was made better in season two. One of the biggest gripes that I had was season one and again I liked it but it was in a very 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 small world you get introduced to these few characters in the first couple episodes and you basically just cycle through the same characters. There's almost no change of scenery, change of sets, you know, and it seems because like they didn't have that much budget in season one, but season two corrects all that. It feels much bigger, much more grand. You see these elegant houses and the little cons that I had about season one were corrected in here. It's just bigger and better in every single way. I absolutely loved Savini. Savini is one of my favorite villains. He's so much much better than Billy Kimber from the first season. Billy Kimber, you already knew right away that Billy Kimber was like a pushover. You know, Savini is actually rough. He's, he's so much more rough. He's so much more aggressive. He's so much more of a hard villain to take down and um, infinitely better than Billy Kimber. Um, the horse trainer girl, I always forget her name, but it's basically Tommy's other love interest in here. And he actually spends more time with her than he does with Grace. And she's got such a sadness to her and you just want to see Tommy you know get with her so so bad and it actually was it was tough because I almost wanted him to get with her and I actually talked to one of my friends and she said that the same thing like I don't know about Grace I kind of like the horse trainer girl so she was weak but also not a pushover I really really liked her character so so much another thing was that it's firing on all cylinders this is kind of a problem that happens in three four five there ends up being so much drama and you know there ends up being some deaths that are going along that you don't really get that perfect Peaky Blinders picture. And I knew this was gonna happen at some point. Everybody's gonna look at Tommy like let down by Tommy because he's just gonna constantly be, be himself, constantly risk these things and people are slowly just gonna lose trust with him. In this one, he's still in everybody's good graces. No, in this one, he's saving everybody. Everything that he's doing is a necessity and it's not like people are arguing or there's this you know, mismatch between the Peaky Blinders. Everything fires on all cylinders and nothing's left in like a weird kind of limbo at the end. The events in season two and the locations were so, so much better. You hear about these little events that are gonna happen. They end up happening in like the last episode and the events and the scenery were just so, so much better than season one. I know I touched that on that a little bit already. The intense action and violence now, I guess this is a pro only for certain people, but I just like how gritty and intense and just, it holds nothing back. And for me, for some reason, I like TV shows where I feel like they're holding nothing back. Like I'm seeing the most raw thing ever. And it is, it's gritty and it's intense. And it seems like you couldn't be more gritty and intense than it is in this show. I have no idea why this show is so anxiety inducing. It is crazy. You know the Peaky Blinders are gonna take some hits before they take down the next guy. So it almost happens every season. And I don't know why, but this show is so, so anxious in a good way. They dangle, you know, 
characters possibly dying from you in the perfect ways and it's just anxiety inducing from beginning to end and it's not really a bad thing i'm just i'm so anxious because the show is so good so it's actually a good thing in my opinion and then another thing is that we had no big major deaths so i'm not going to get into any details but season three and season four have some major huge deaths from characters that you just absolutely love and it sucks so bad to see them go out in season two i mean obviously there are some losses um, tommy does take up you know a good amount of damage but you don't see a loss of like a major Major, major character because this is like season two so all the characters that we like like let give us like four or five six seasons before you start killing off like the greatest characters and they don't kill off any two two important characters here Peaky Blinders somehow has like a really good progression like series to series like every time you think oh Tommy by the end Tommy's just the king of the world and then the next time they, they find a way to give him more to do to give him more to do and it seems like every season it actually expands instead of we're doing the same thing over and over which is actually really nice because normally if, if you got to be the top to be the king there's nowhere to go so then Tommy basically needs to just fall but somehow they keep raising the roof and it's very very, very believable. I really like that about this show. Peaky Blinders just has these rewatchable scenes and I don't know what it is. Very, very seldomly do I ever watch a movie and was like, oh my goodness, that scene was so juicy that I need to see it again. And this happened at least twice in this season. And this has happened in, in Peaky Blinders season three. So this almost never happens even with some of the best movies that I've ever seen. So to have these scenes that are just so juicy that I have to rewatch once twice maybe even three times like very seldomly do i come across a show that i like that much so my mixed aspects is grace because like i said i loved season one the main parts about season one that i liked was i wanted to see tommy get with grace but then it's almost kind of like she didn't really want to be a part of Peaky Blinders season two. I think Grace is only in maybe three episodes, but I think it's more like just two. She's maybe in 10 to 15 minutes of this entire season. So it's like they are giving us the icing on the cake. They are giving us what we wanted at the end of season one. Tommy's kind of moved past that. We really like this new sorry i forget her name but the horse trainer girl i re really like that character we've had time to bond with that character and there's kind of like this love triangle but anyways i'm just kind of mixed on grace because they make her the most important thing but at the same time we don't get enough time with her as much as we did in the first one so i just wish if grace was going to be the prize at the end that we got more time with her because it feels like she was just barely in the season and they're like oh yeah grace here's like the here's the trophy grace here you got her boom i just wish that if she was going to be the trophy that if she would be in more episodes that's just me personally so let's jump into the cons i really almost didn't have too many there i felt like there was some small plot conveniences at the end how tommy just kind of gets away at the end and then also tom hardy goes against tommy early in the season and then all of a sudden they make an agreement i, I don't know but i feel like there were some small plot conveniences in this one but to be honest guys i really almost can't think of anything i do not like about this show and i actually took a long break after this season specifically because it left so perfect and i knew the show is so crazy and so dangerous that in season three they just have to kill somebody that we love so i'm like i want to end with season two we everybody's here the picture is perfect and so i actually didn't watch season three for like a month or month and a half but then one of my friends got me back into it and I've just been crazy watching them. I think I'm on season five now. I'm gonna be pushing out the Peakies. Let me know what you guys think of Peaky Blinders. Have you checked it out? Have you not checked it out? I absolutely highly recommend that everybody watch the show if you like gritty, intense, realistic, classic shows. Absolutely love this show. Can't recommend it enough. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but for as far as serious shows, this might be in my top five shows of all time, which is crazy considering how picky I am. But if I were to give this season a rating, I'd probably give it a nine to a 9.5 out of 10 near perfect absolutely loved it to be honest guys dexter was one of my favorite shows uh, i liked season one two and four i absolutely loved them but peaky blinders may beat dexter you know i need to rewatch dexter to be able to say that because i love dexter but anyways guys let me know what you think of peaky blinders season two season three and four reviews will be coming out shortly we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and i couldn't do it without any of you guys hope you guys are the best i'm having a great day out here hopefully having a great day at home see you all in the next video peace